Oh man, it felt so good to be back at the Samoa Hill Climb. The atmosphere, even without the spectators, was intense, familiar. It's hard to believe that two and a half years have passed since the last one. Screw you, COVID. It was also great to see something on two wheels at the hill climb for the first time. That is no less than the new Suzuki Hayabusa was simply unbelievable. The man making all the smoke is AJ Fenter, aka the quickest South African to ever lap the Isle of Man TT. That's right, Suzuki had a presence at the latest hill climb which makes sense. Monster Tajima and his crazy Vitara and SX4 rally beasts have long conquered Pikes Peak, which must be the most infamous hill climb on the planet. So, it makes sense. Then locally, there's the fact that some of the single seats at Simola are also running Hayabusa engines, including Franco Scribantes winning a Chevron, which has two mated together to form a V8. Then there were these two champs. Oh, I was excited that even though it's sort of like by default, I got to go in the top 10. So I was excited to get my last run because I didn't get the last qualifying. And I thought I could get a 30, like get into the 46s, but obviously you can get slower this last run and then I kind of missed a gear. <laughs> but I still got a good time and it was a very good weekend and I definitely will come back again. Well, we ecstatic. I mean, from the last time that we were here two years ago, we've gone nearly a second quicker. Um, so all the work that we put in seemed to have helped quite a bit. Uh, the, 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 the pace has just stepped up so dramatically, you can see from the last time that we were here. Thanks to Suzuki. Um, for all their backing for the, the, the hill climb this weekend, so we're happy with that. But naturally, there was also the usual lineup of Nissan GTRs and supercars on the hill, buggies and sports cars, and I was one of the lucky content creators that got to produce some forms exclusively for Suzuki and, of course, the folks at Nissan. Sadly, I missed having a lekker like big crowd this year, but there's still all the noise and petrol and wings and things, so I'm thrilled to have been there. It's been as exciting as ever. The battle between the Nissans has been awesome to behold, with the usual heavy eaters such as Skribante, Wilhelm Bart, and Wade van Zimmeren at the front of the pack doing high 59s and 40s. Wade's R34 in particular was a sight to behold as he too broke into the 39s and later posted the most mental sideways lap of the hill I'd ever seen and not on purpose. A far cry from the classic car action of Friday but definitely equally fun to watch. As were the Lotus Exiges of the Yobears, each sporting a different powertrain setting them up the hill. Naturally, there are Lamborghinis and Porsches and beasts of that nature, including a rare noble competing with the highly tuned race cars. God, I love this event. It's just so unique. I mean, where else can you see an F1 car, Ford Ranger, Citroen Rally car, and Toyota MR2 touring car all charge up the same hill? And about that MR2, it was driven by Peter Zeely, who managed to beat out the Nissans and crack into the 39s, winning the event for the first time ever. I'll have sleepless night for months over this one. That was absolutely in the bag. All I had to do was bring it home and made a mistake up the hill and selected the wrong gear and had a box full of neutrals. And by the time I'd sorted myself out, a second or two had gone away and I couldn't get it back and that was that. I'm a little bit baffled. They must uh, find out what happened there. Um, we, we had no power, so um, uh, I, I do not know if something uh, glitch or uh, electronic something. But we had, uh, yeah, from the launch, I understood that the power was was limited somehow, and and then uh, we had, yeah. So at the top, I could go, but um, where I needed it was there was nothing. Yeah. Not not enough. There was something, but not enough. The Samoa Hill Climb is an important event to me. I even had the rare privilege of competing here once in a Renault Megane RS, so I can relate to these pilots pushing their whips frantically up this bit of tarmac, living on the limit and sending it with every fiber of their being. Who knows, maybe I'll be back one day in my Supra or even my Chevy?